Hey guys, welcome to the New Tech Dojo's new episode, BI with Power BI, how to get jobs in BI cloud space. Today with me, I have Jason McKittrick. Hi, Jason. Hi, Rishabh. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing well. So Jason is a data platform architect at Microsoft who is very passionate about data intelligence. He's been a BI maven since 1997, and because he spent time with multiple industries, that allows him to bring de his deep understanding to customers. His primary role is to bring his customers an aha moment by helping them ask questions which they couldn't ask before to their database. Since last few years, he's been focusing on uh, the Azure Cloud technology, which is another flagship product from Microsoft. Uh, this further accelerates the business and data needs of his clients. Um, so Jason, uh, do you want think that you or for that matter all BI architects are the new god because you guys really literally no questions you cannot ask to your database you guys have made that possible yeah no for sure it's definitely a uh, uh, important role uh, it's been there for a few years uh, I would say probably for the last 15 years but it's really starting to come into its uh, uh, front line uh, it's it's kind of the new buzz, uh, BI, AI, all of that's coming out into the front line where it was sitting in the back before. Right. And Jason, by the way, he also authors a pretty cool blog called the SQLgeek.com, uh, where he publishes content around BI architecture, BI cloud. Uh, and he's pretty active on Twitter too. You can follow him uh, with the same handle name, the SQL Geek. Both the links are in the description of this video. So Jason, let's begin. Yeah. So, J Jason, can you tell us in layman terms, what is BI and how Power BI family helps us to achieve that? Yeah. So, BI is, is making use of your data, making better decisions with your data. So, there's a great BI maturity model put out by the Data Warehouse Institute that companies look for um, as they mature in the BI space. And it goes from what happened to what's happening now to what should we be doing and get very predictive and prescriptive. To do that, uh, you need to, to work in the BI space. So it's really business intelligence and it uses your data to help companies make better decisions uh, about their business in general. They can mine their data, um, they can, can get it out to the masses so the company is all on the same page. And who uses BI? Is it the middle management? Is it the CXOs? Well, so originally, uh, so let's let's think back 15 years ago, it was at that level. Um, now it's really BI for the masses. Uh, we put out a tool called Excel. Sure, sure, you folks have heard about that before. Yeah. And, and it was really it was really to enable BI to everyone in the company. Now, not everybody may use it as their primary job, but the ability to get in and 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 mine your data and look at your data and discover your data um, and use the dashboards. Uh, which is what Power BI, the next generation of BI, was the Power BI tool. And, and that really opened up BI for the masses even further than Excel did, um, where they're now using mobile and they're driving daily decisions and daily alerting, and they're managing by exception. So it's kind of everybody in the company. Power BI allows them to manage by exception instead of looking at a report every day, oh, do I need to see if this number is over two? Do I need to see if this number is over two? They can set a mobile alert on their phone. Mm -hmm. And now when their phone says, hey, oh, if it goes to three, alert me, now they can just go about their day and it'll alert them. So it really is is kind of end-to-end in the enterprise nowadays. You know, we're seeing wide adoption across many, many companies. And what about the other tools? So Power BI is more of visualization. What about Power Query and Power Pivot? How do they add value? Yeah, so... Um, Power, Power Pivot and Power Query are actually inside of Power BI. We, we brought them in. Now it's the Get Data button. Mm -hmm. um, and so the goal is to get that product set inside of all of our products. I mean, we've made many announcements around it. So um, Power BI, the back end, started from Power Pivot, which came out of SSAS Analysis Services Tabular. And so, yeah, so P Power Pivot gives you the ability to... Um, model your data and mash up different data data types and data sources together. Being able to transform data, cleanse it, rather than building out um, ETL packages and SSIS. It was really for the end user uh, that's very familiar with Excel to be able to take their data, mash it together in a meaningful way, 
and be able to put put it together to model it to use uh, um, Excel for or publish it up into Power BI now. Right. And what are the different roles in BI? So I understand there's BI architect, there's BI developer, there's a BI analyst. Are there some more BI roles which I didn't mention? Yeah, so I mean, he, he, you know, it kind of starts all over the place depending on where you're at with BI, right? So if you're talking about enterprise BI, you're always going to have BI developers. And those folks are going to be developing models, the semantic layer, like in SSAS tabular. So that's going to be your model developers, your BI modelers. Um, your BI developers may be building reports or dashboards that are going to be at the enterprise level. When you take it down to like departmental level or end user, um, you're going to have like BI analysts and they're going to build their own, own departmental dashboards or models that they may publish out, um, depending on where you're at uh, in, in kind of the stack in the organization. And how would you describe like a typical day for say a BI modeler? versus a typical day for a BI analyst? Yeah, so um, a BI modeler is really going to be someone that's going to take those business requirements um, or go out and investigate the business and understand how the business works. And then they're going to model the data, find the sources of data, bring that model together so that they can put the semantic layer together in tabular. Most of it's done in tabular. Um, some of it's done in, in Power BI Desktop, but when we're talking enterprise, uh, we talk SSAS tabular, and so they'll work with the business, your BDMs, your business decision makers, to get the, the data that's needed. Um, they may go out and find a, a business problem, for se. Yeah. So they may go to, uh, like in oil and gas, they're going to go to their, their folks that are drilling and ask them what kind of problems they're having, or pipeline, hey, what, what are the main issues, and how what would you need to solve that? They'll find that data, bring it together, um, and there's a little bit of data science and machine learning that, that goes into that as well. Um, now, BI analysts, they're going to be on the other side of it. So depending on if you're a, a straight-up BI analyst or you're a data scientist, it kind of stretches there. So the analyst is going to be someone that's looking at the data, trying to find the patterns, trying to discover the data, find things about the data that um, may or may not... Uh, lead to, to a discovery, right? So yeah. things about looking at history, trying to do what-if scenarios, those types of things. When you get into the data science portion of it, that's where they're starting to ask questions about what should I do when this part does this? Or if I look for this anomalous data, how can I operationalize that um, to make better decisions for the company? Right. And how do you think Power BI is different from other visualization software? I mean, what can I do which others can't? I've seen Tableau picking up quite rapidly I mean, Tableau has been historically a leader, but since last few years, I think Power BI has taken up the number one position. And I'm following the yeah, Gartner so, chart, and I mean, Tableau is trying really hard. Yeah, um, well, a lot, of, a lot of interesting things have happened, you know, in the competitive space for BI. There's quite a bit of tools, and as you mentioned, the Gartner Cube. Right. Um, we've positioned really well um, on the Gartner Cube. We've come out really really far and up into the right where you want to be, that leader and, and delivery, right? right. Um, when we look at competitors in the space, you know, one of the things that we're great at at Microsoft is we're, we integrate well. So um, where some of our competitors are really um, closed off as far as systems, like, uh, you know, you mentioned one of our competitors, you can build it. For us, uh, with SSAS Tabular, which is kind of our universe, if you will, or our semantic layer, um, it's open to Excel, Reporting Services, Power BI, Tableau can reach in. Everybody can reach in that can speak DAX or MDX to our tools. Right. Um, and so that really gives us an edge, I believe, mm. over others. Yeah, you also have Azure Cloud, which you can easily integrate it with your Power BI data source. Yeah, I think Microsoft, I think, has built a, a overall, I mean, all-round product, all-round product. Yeah, we're good at integrating. I mean, that's what we do. We're, we're integrators and commoditizers, right? Um, so we're, we're really good at getting out product to the masses. Um, everybody's going to have their 5% of what they do that we don't do, um, but we get folks 95, 98% of the way there. There's always going to be a shiny, a shiny little button here or there that each vendor has, including <laughs> us, right? Um, but it, it's... Uh, pretty great to, to be at Microsoft just with the integration in our technology and stack, you know, from paginated reports to dashboards to mobile, you know, having that complete stack is 
is where we, we kind of shine. Right. One, one interesting question actually somebody asked me in last in an event. Uh, do you think uh, Mr. Hans Peter Loon, who's, who's quoted that term business intelligence in, say, 1950s, you think, you think he'll be happy with what's happening with BI today? Yeah, it took long enough, right? <laughs> even, even R, I remember back in college taking an R class in, mm. in stats, right? So we had a couple weeks of learning R. I mean, it came out in 1958, the, the statistical computing language of R. Right. And now it's it's mainstream, right? Um, we made our acquisition with um, uh, Revolution Analytics, Revo, and uh, now we have uh, MR Open. So just from where BI is today, it took a while to, even even in my career time when I started, uh, mm-hmm. BI was there, data warehousing, but it was, it was more of an afterthought, like, oh, we got to build a data warehouse, everybody's doing it. Now it's let, now companies are driving the other way. We need help with our data. It needs to do this. It needs to tell us all sorts of stuff about it. And so folks are becoming very data-driven, and that's why BI is, is very hot, because everybody wants to do that now versus those one-offs or a project that we kind of stuff down into the corner or kind of have to do. Right. And what do you think BI will turn up in next, say, 10, 15 years? What do you think the future of BI is? Well, I think it's going to become AI, and uh, mm-hmm. that's where everything's headed. Uh, the work we're doing with AI, even inside of Power BI today, tying it into ML, um, using some of the streaming analytics services of Azure and the integration, um, there's a lot that we're doing today that AI will just do for you. In the future, when you go in in the morning, it's going to tell you what you should be worried about that day. You're not going to have to go click around 60 reports or dashboards to figure out what happened. Cortana is going to say, good morning, Rashad. Today you need to look at these pieces of equipment because they've had some vibration and they're going to fail this week, right? And I've already dispatched tickets for you. Would you like to check on status to see if you need to, to help in any way? You know, very proactive, and it's going to do a lot of it on on its own. It's going to automate quite a bit of the work we do today. Um, you know, I see a lot of data science movement and advanced analytics and that that space, and definitely AI right. for sure. Right, and and I think. Uh... And some, somebody told me, I read this LinkedIn post, that a lot of data governance issues which we have today could be, I mean, if they use blockchain for, for say, data, database management, I think it could also reduce those, those issues related to data governance and metadata yeah. and everything, both of them. Well, for sure, from the metadata and, and possibly from kind of a lineage standpoint, blockchain would solve that. Uh, it's a, it's definitely an interesting technology, and it's it's still in its infancy. So it'll be great to see how it plays out in all these pieces that are coming out. Um, I think natural query language is going to be big uh, with that. Just being able to talk to your data. I mean, bots are starting to come out and be really popular now. The automated AI bots, but uh, you know, today you can already talk to your PC, and Cortana will answer through Power BI. Hey, Cortana, and ask the question of your data and it will respond right in your desktop without even going in the app. All right. I think BI analysts still have to worry about the future, but BI architects, I think they are here to stay for really long. I mean, you can't automate those those uh, tasks. No, and, and, and I think that there's still a place for both in the future. Um, so you can automate a lot of tasks and you can put AI in a lot of tasks, hmm. but, you know, Oh, I, and just to talk about uh, retail or oil and gas, it, it still takes that knowledge that the analyst has about how their business runs uh, to, sure. to really bring that knowledge to help train the AI. So I always see a place for that, uh, at least in you know maybe the short term, 20 years. Uh, maybe in the future it'll 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 uh, take all of that on. But uh, just understanding how how things work in the business uh, until those models are all trained, you know, the analysts are definitely going to have a position in the. Sure. The business. Sure. And uh, coming to the line of career growth, so how can somebody, if I'm a newbie today, how do I prepare myself to become a BI analyst? Yeah, so, I mean, certifications are obviously a really great place to start. Um, there's great certifications on Power BI. Uh, starting to work with analysis services tabular is, is really key, understanding how data comes together and mashes up. 
Uh, the technology is, has gotten so far these days, you know, with Power BI making it easy for the end user, it's really understanding and trying to figure out business processes and, and solve for those problems and understand what it takes to answer questions from a data standpoint, finding the data in the organization that you can tie together for the BI needs. If, if you come in and look at it from a peer, purist, uh, like, well, I want to understand a tool and then I'll figure out BI, mm. the tools have gotten pretty pretty simplistic over the years. I mean, what it took to build an OLAP cube back in 2000, whew, it's something we can achieve in, a, in under a day now, you know, or a couple days of effort. It's not a, not a two-month development cycle anymore, right? It's, sure. So understanding the tools are important, but understanding how business works is super important. And we're all, you know, all of our, te all of us technologists are having to move into that space. Data and AI has always been there first because we've had to understand the business to build a data warehouse and build the bus according, you know, using the Ralph Kimball method there. Uh, but business, understanding business and how to bring it back into uh, the tool is going to be important. Are there any prerequisites for learning Power BI? Yeah, so powerbi.com is a great site. There's a lot of uh, videos on how to from every little thing. Uh, there's some great stuff on GitHub if you want to develop your own custom visuals for Power BI. It's a, again, very open platform where you can go out and build your own custom visuals, bring them in and use them for your organization. Um, the other one I would point you to is SQLBI.com. And those are the guys who wrote the, the, the DAX book. And DAX is in super important to uh, to understand it's how we talk in Power BI. Um, it's, it is the language for the formulas, if you will, as well as tabular. So all your uh, measures are gonna be written in, in DAX. So it's important to learn that. And, and there's a wealth of information on TechNet and, and Microsoft, but powerbi.com, the blogs, the training that's out there, it's pretty extensive. Sure, sure. One last question. What advice would you like to give to people who who are keen to join the BI world? Yeah, I think it's a great space. Um, it's uh, so I cover quite a few customers in the area that I'm at, uh, a little over 400 right in there, and BI is hot at every single one of them that I've been to. Mm. Uh, so it's it's definitely the the right place to be. Um, it's the right time to get into data. Uh, it's important to to get into the technology field. So for those that are starting out. Um, just even going in and building reports to get your foot in the door, that's that's a great place to start. Building SSRS reports or building BI dashboards, just somebody who's doing development work, it's a great place to start for sure. And then over time, involve into that analyst or developer as you grow within the business or you grow within the technical side of the um, in BI. Sure. Great, Jason. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Glad okay. to have had a chance to chat. I mean, have you have you get a chance to check the, the our YouTube channel, New Tech Dojo? Oh yeah, your YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I got a chance to to watch a couple of videos uh, before I responded back to you. I I think it's great what you're doing. I was I'm happy to be a part of it. Sure. Uh, and in the future, if you want to cover another area, please feel free to reach out to me. Excellent. I think it's great. Excellent. Thank you so much, Jason. Yeah, no problem. Have a good one. Bye-bye.